Hello, everybody. Welcome to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Taylor, joined by Ben Roy Turner. Hello there. And Josh Brown. Hello there. <laughs> Wasn't expecting the hello there, although I should have been, because it's every single time episode 3's biggest fan, Ben Roy Turner. Give me the finger guns <laughs> on the video. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we're we going to dive into pretty much just what we've been playing. You guys have rediscovered The Witcher 3, one of the best games of all time. Um, but also, we uh, tend to ask on Twitter on the hashtag WCGP for questions. Um, and we've got a whole bunch came in, so I'm going to do a little question sandwich. Um, do some questions at the beginning, talk a bit about The Witcher. I guess that would make it a Witcher sandwich. Um, and then we'll get to <laughs> some more at the end. Um, so we'll see. But I really like this question. Uh, it comes in from Nondi, um, who said, Do you think that if Fallout 76 went onto a service like Game Pass for a month, it would help its popularity? Um, um, my immediate take is yes, because I think yes. if people, if you remove the price tag, at least people would try it out. Um, but Josh, you made a little exhale noise there. What do you think? Well, well, this is right. This is the big right. Okay, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, crap all over Fallout too much. But the reality of the situation is, when the game came out, we got a lot of. Um, I think we got four review copies or something, didn't we? We got a couple. <laughs> might have done, yeah, might have done. Yeah, right. I, I, you got cards and postcards and stuff like that for it as well. Yeah. Well, we got more than one. So to cut a long story, st- to cut a long story short, <laughs> I got one, and it's in Fallout seventy six has been installed on my PlayStation for about two years now. <laughs> and I still, I still haven't touched it. So I've technically got it there uh-huh. for nothing, and I, that I still not, I'm, I'm still not, you know, encouraged to go to it. I think we just need to, we need to fix it, man. Like it doesn't matter whether it costs sixty pounds or whether it's free. If it's a broken game. Mm. fundamentally like no one's going to want to give it a chance once you once you put that reputation behind you then yes if it is on games past it it might might help but to me an influx of players like that mm. can't like will that not just tank it even more if people do check yeah. it out in, in on those numbers will it not just you know ruin the servers i don't you make I don't a very know. good point i think yeah i mean i was just thinking that people would dive in and just try it see what the hype's about because i don't like obviously yeah we had access to it for free um but i think just the amount of other things we were juggling with it the uh there was something else that came out right around the time 76 did and it was like yeah this just isn't worth our time. Um, but I think the vast majority of people who have access to Game Pass, like that idea of just diving in and trying it does feel like a positive. Um, but I think you'd get so many people going, trying it to laugh at it and it doesn't hold up. Like it's still broken as hell. Um, ben Roy, how, what's your thoughts on Fallout 76? Look, if Phil Spencer came along and gave me Fallout 76 for including in my Game Pass package i would try it out i was i was actually watching a video from a human on the internet called jim stern last night because i thought i'd catch up with the fallout 76 discourse and yeah it still looks crap but i was sitting there thinking oh uh, well me and my friends are coming to the end of this game soon and we need another game to just hang out on because we can't go outside anyway it can't be so, Metal Gear Survive either, so yeah i mean well yeah. only two only one of us has the pokey stick game thing <laughs> and i was thinking 76 for, for a moment last night i thought 76 i went no no, it's got to be like, I was considering buying it, but then I, I st- stepped back and was like, we're going to carry on playing Dead Rising 2. But if they ca- <laughs> it came to Xbox Game Pass, I probably would download it because what right. the hell? Right. I- I'm more or less in the exact same boat as you because every few months I have this, you know, brief moment of madness where I think, you know yeah. what, I could, I could just play Fallout 76. I love Fallout. I want to give it a try. Maybe I could just boot it up. But what puts me off? is the idea that I have to get past the the, the grind because for as decent as Wastelanders looks, that is really appealing to me, but I don't mm. want to have to get to like, you know, a level where that's fun or I don't have to go through all of the quests that are already in the main game, like all mm. of the fetch quests, looking for bottles and stuff like that. I don't want to have to like uh, spend 20 hours or whatever getting to the point where I can have fun. That's what puts me off more than yeah. anything else, more than the right. bugs or more than... It's, it's issues or something. It's it's the fact that I'm not on the same level playing field as as Rich, who played it quite a lot. You know what I mean? Rich can mm-hmm. jump in and enjoy what they've changed, whereas I'm gonna be right there from scratch, from start, and then I have to kind of. To me, that's too much of a commitment. You know what I mean? I would, like, I, would I would hope that they um have. <laughs> I would hope the, the glimmer of hope that they've realised how to put people in different player pools and, and player buckets in regards to how long you've played and what items you have access to. As I said that sentence, I remembered that whole thing about um they introduced the uh someone had like a certain kind of tuna and then everybody had a kind of tuna and then it was like a thing where they brought like a chest in and if you put stuff in the chest it deleted everything and I just that, that's just Fallout no Fallout seventy six is not worth. Do you it. remember it, when they yeah. um? the people that have paid for that pass thing that they mark which is like the rich people now and then all yes. the people that don't have that pass revolted and started killing them all i mean that, that game's in there <laughs> it sounds like a trash fire but 
unless it's free on Game Pass, well, free on Game Pass, then I'd do it. But I don't necessarily want to part with some currency for it. It's got to be yeah. via via Phil, via Phil Spencer sort of thing. If, um, <laughs> if it's free and you can log in and just see like a mob of people hunting one other person as they all run away from them, I might be into that. But I I don't know. I don't. Think, I'm not guaranteed that experience. So it'll have to wait uh, for now. But yeah, you guys have both been playing um, The Witcher Three. Now this is one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm going to dive in as well. But what I guess we'll start with you. I forget which one of you messaged first, saying you were going to go back to it. I think it was you, Josh. I think it was. And then Ben Roy said that he was going to get to it after he finished Resident yeah. Evil Seven. Was that the was that uh, the plan? I have almost got the platinum in Resident Evil Five. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I just have Sorry. to do an, I the less do crazy response. An egg glitch, and then I have the platinum. Just got to, you know, <laughs> pass it backwards and forwards. But yeah, you're in a perpetual me. state of replaying all the Resident Evils. It's like me with Friends on Netflix that you get to the end and you just restart <laughs> it again. Just go yep. back through it. Um, but yeah, Josh, how have you been finding The Witcher Three? What made you want to go back to it? Well, it's it's funny. It's because I was watching actually a video by a YouTuber called Joseph Anderson, who's done this like big Genius. dive on the whole um, series. He's put yep. the first part up, but I was watching you know parts of Witcher One, and I just got like the itch. I got the itch because I, I was in between games. I just finished Final Fantasy VII, and I thought, you know what? I haven't played The Witcher in about five years, and this is <laughs> making me want to go back to it. And I was wondering whether it was was going to hold up because you know I haven't touched it since then, apart from the Blood and Wine DLC, which I played a couple of years afterwards. Um, but I wanted to go back on it to see whether it was still one of my favorite games in twenty fifth in twenty twenty as it was in twenty fifteen. And honestly, I've just been like head over heels in love with it. It's mm -hmm. been so good. I think I pumped about thirty hours into it already. I'm still in the in the first act, but it it holds up in a lot of ways, and it feels dated in other ways. Like if that makes sense, Ooh. which has been kind of strange to experience. But overall, it's still such an amazing game, and it's been such a joy to get back into it man like mm -hmm. and i feel like i'm getting so much more out of it the second time around there was so much content that i even though i put 100 hours into the game the first time around there's so much i missed that i'm just oh, man, it's, the second time it's absolutely ginormous i guess actually yeah ben roy what were your returning thoughts or how have you found it going back to it so uh, a bit like josh i haven't played it for five years my last save was 2015 i was like <laughs> god <laughs> but uh no i watched uh the i watched the show and then Ooh. Gerald was in my mind. And I remembered how much I enjoyed Gerald as a character and how I fought. Gerald. I Ger Gerald. However you say that, like, <laughs> I've tried. Jules, Jules always calls him like Ger Gerald. <laughs> it's like, what game uh, are you playing? <laughs> so now I'm just going to call him Henry because Henry Cowell. So I really like how I enjoyed Henry as a character. And I really yeah. want to experience Henry's journey all the way to the end. Even though I've had it spoiled for me because. I've done. I've even written about this game, like like all this sort of thing. Like I know the ending, but I'm still enjoying it going back. The first thing I did back was uh, I punched a lad in a village and won some coins. I was like, <laughs> give me some gold coins for beating this man. I was like, you know, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And just because they changed the movement since I last played it, I think yep. that was a problem that I had before. And also, I got into this weird perpetual loop where I was just always stressing because. This sword was fine, then it broke. But then my other sword was fine, then it broke. And I fixed that one and it's fine. And then I'm wearing a court jester's outfit because I don't know where to find the cool <laughs> armor. I just want to look cool and I want to kill some monsters. I don't want everything breaking, but I now I'm back into it. Uh -huh. It's kind of, I'm kind of back into the groove. And yeah, I think I'm back, John Wick style. <laughs> and I'm actually going to put as much as I can into it for the next foreseeable 46 days. <laughs> I was gonna ask because you you messaged yesterday about like yeah wanting to look cool wanting to get the armor and stuff and then you messaged saying lots of things are breaking which is like the armor and the weapons can yeah. break and stuff um I guess like for both of you like how have you found like how have you spec your character and have you how have you found the combat and stuff because all the like like you said Ben right they patched it so much they changed the way that Geralt or they give you options on how Geralt can move they changed yeah. the inventory and the UI systems and all that kind of stuff um yeah I guess like back to Josh like how have you found like spec and characters and the actual combat and the gameplay. Well, jumping off something Roy just said, I do mm -hmm. think like the first 10 hours or so are quite overwhelming with how much information it gives you, especially if you jump in on a harder difficulty. I've been, I've been playing it on um, the Blood and Broken Bones one, and I feel like when it just throws you into the world with so much to do, it has the, the most kind of confusing inventory set screens, even though they've done a lot to kind of improve them. I think it throws a lot of information at you that you kind of need to take in. So it takes a while to kind of get on top of that and um, feel like, you know, you're doing well in combat and stuff. But mm -hmm. once you get over that initial hump, I just do think it clicks, like mixing signs, upgrading your character, getting the good armor. It all kind of it feels good, and it doesn't feel like you're on the back foot like you are in the opening hours. To remedy Ben Roy's issue with the, um, 
the uh, the terrible armor. I finally mm. been hunting the the Witcher armor this time around. I've been yeah. making it a point to collect all of those and craft all of those and have a good time. And that's been that's been lush because my guy right now, Geralt, big uh, big Henry. He's got this lovely little. <laughs> It's it's the cat armor, the Witcher cat armor. So he's got this lovely little um, blue bodysuit on with his. Not the little on. tiny one. Not the he little one. That, like, it looks like Aerith, <laughs> like the he little tiny hench, jacket. Man. No. <laughs> is there is there a specific like armor set that I can just put into YouTube and have some person from 2015 tell me where to find this? Because I don't yes, care about cheating that way. Because I, I I was searching best armor and I was like. All these people's boring opinions on the bed. No one was just going go here, here, and here. Just I don't want any. Of the, I don't want to flirt. Let's just right. just just get to it. Tell me. It's a hundred hour game. You can't just get in off the bat. And I just cool. want a bit of armor now. I'm about I'm about I'm about level ten. Like to put it into, uh, perspective, I never started again when I started playing the other day. I'm just carrying on my save. I'm not doing right. all that again. You're, I'm not going. Oh, this. I'm not. Uh, mm. ha, by the way, Gwent. Crap. I'm not having to go back <laughs> and play it. the Stop play the board. Saying... The, okay. Boring when again because <laughs> I don't want to play it. I just want to. I by the way commend this game so much because unlike a game because like Sekiro, it, you can dodge enemies in this game. And I don't know about every said before it, but when I'm in a sword fight, I prefer to. I, I like a bit of parrying, but I like my dodging as well because I like to go ha ha, and I like to feel good about it. I might but, retitle this podcast and the madness set in. Although that would imply that this is something new. We live with this man. But we live with his takes every day, and this I've missed this. Um, I thought, yeah, can where I to even? Say, yeah, go on. I was, I was, I was searching for this like uh, thing. I, it's part of them. I don't remember what it's called. I just following what this person has said from 2015. I, I was, yep. I was time traveling, and I killed some. Are they drowners or something? They called the drowners are a thing. Yep, killed one of them, and then this big sort of like bird goat thing was on this tower, and we had tried a little tussle. My sword didn't do anything, so I realized, ah, oh, I probably need to. Go and find, or, or you know, cheat and use use the internet. Just Google how to kill this thing. But mm. I had to run away. But also, dealing with those idiots that fly in the sky, and like, you have to gotta wait ten minutes for one to come down. <laughs> and then you go, go away. You do, you do have a you have a crossbow to grab to ground uh, the. But thing. it's it's so small. <laughs> it's, so you it's small. You're supposed to fire it anyway. Look, the, um, I think that you're already hitting a big old snag. That you want it. You want it to be something that you want, and that's not what The Witcher is, which was your problem with Breath of the Wild and Sekiro and everything. I'm just I'm uh, preempting this. I just I'm gonna finish uh, Breath of the uh, not Breath of the Boring. I'm gonna finish The Witcher Three, yep. or at least do a load of it because now I'm I'm kind of like I've got the taste back and I really want to experience this. Because um, I remember one of the last quests I did before I put it down was the Bloody Baron stuff. Yeah, mm. like, I really enjoyed that sort of focusedness to it. Focusedness mm -hmm. isn't probably a word, but um, so when, I, when I go through one of those sections and I'm back out into the world. Mm -hmm. I get more overwhelmed in this than I ever have done in like a Fallout or another massive game that I played. Like, I just, mm. I just don't know kind of what to do next. And when I'm also stressing about said armor that's just breaking after it rains, I'm just really worried. And after then I'm, rains. then I'm in that loop of ugh. And then I'm searching the woods. And then I really enjoy the enemy design. Like going through the woods is dangerous in this game, and I love mm. it. But at the same time. Oh, just let me go and get to the next town. Like, what, look, wolves, look, I fought you a minute ago. You're all dead. Don't respawn. It's fine. I think you should go, you should need to play something more like action focused because they want you to have that balance. Like they want you to be the witcher. Like you're, you know, specking potions for certain enemies and you're smithing swords and like planning literally enemy by enemy, which signs you're going to use on which one. Like how are you going to like trap them in a certain place and do extra yeah. damage and then move away and evade? Like I love all that stuff, but it's way more, it's way more considered. I think they want you to play it way more considerately than like just, you know, get the cool armor, go kill the big thing. I think if I get cool armor, then I'd be fine to then go. But like I just because I'm looking at myself dressed in like like I'm gonna dance for some fat king. I'm just like <laughs> Well you don't need to wear that stuff. You could just wear his starter armor if you're yeah, that but then you get just battered. Because not if you're good at evading. That's one of the best things about the combat system is that if you're decent at evading and countering, you can totally take on higher level enemies. Oh uh, but the, the thing is that like the big goat uh someone's probably gonna know what this is, but the big goat uh thingy at like some sort of like tower where I had to swim underneath and come back out of. Okay. Uh, I was hitting it with my sword, well, with the sword you're supposed to use on them, the silver sword. Yeah. It wasn't doing any damage whatsoever, so I guess that I need... Oh, yeah, I mean, I was going to say, it's, it's still level-based, so like you'll have to like, yeah. chip damage something huge, but that sounds like a weird thing you're not supposed to fight for a while. Josh, mate, are you still Hi. alive? What, what do you think <laughs> of all this stuff? It, it's, kind, it's kind of madness. I do feel like <laughs> it's... 
it's not the way you're supposed to play the game necessarily because you mentioned that monster there where you have to go in like <clears throat> swim underneath and come up from the big tower like, yeah i remember i remember seeing that and thinking that was such a cool moment like I wasn't. I wasn't going to, for, to try and get cool ammo. I was just walking around. I saw that thing on top of the castle. And I thought that is so awesome. It felt so gothic and atmospheric and cool. And I wanted to kill that thing, but I couldn't because it was uh, too high of a level. And I, mm. I, I both love and dislike that it's so gated by levels. I think it's a. It's an issue that Assassin's Creed has as well. The mm. most recent one, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where. Where you just you just can't take anything on if it's if it's too far beyond what you're doing. But then that does lend itself quite nicely to the pace of quests because, like you said, Benroy, I also felt overwhelmed, especially when I was going to the big city, um, Novigrad. By that point, I had so many side quests, so many main quests, and I sort of had a bit of existential dread of, oh God, will I ever finish this? But the fact that most of them are gated by levels made me go like, right, okay, I can sift through all this. I can I can focus on this. I can make my way up to that and have a nice little sense of progression once I. Um, finally get there. But I've been really enjoying exploration this time around. I realized mm. I didn't do much of that when I was playing it originally. I was just doing like the Witcher contracts, the side quests, the main quests. It wasn't going for the question marks. But I was really surprised this time around how detailed those are. Although mm. it's just like the handful of same repeated tasks. You know, you've got your bandit camps, you've got your monster nests, you got your abandoned um, settlements and stuff. Like each one is visually, usually like quite interesting. There's some interesting stories to find there where I just, mm. I couldn't believe that I'd missed so many of them the first time around so many like cool little um environmental details or cool little monsters or cool little stories like i just i thought the world felt so rich and i almost felt like i, I unlocked something that mm -hmm. everyone's told me beforehand because i always got like the depth and the nuance and the rich richness in the quests but i never really got it while out exploring i was kind of like ben roy thinking you know i'm sick of these wolves following me i don't want to fight another handful of drowners but this time around, having not knowing where the story goes, not wanting to just blitz through it so I could talk to everyone about it, being able to take my time, I've re been really in enjoying it. And I've got to the point where, at the moment, I'm actually way over-leveled for the quests that I'm actually doing. So those I mean, have been a breeze. But the that's thing, quite nice. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The thing that I absolutely love, that I, I champion for that game so much, is that I think they found the perfect map, like, they found the perfect way to do an open-world protagonist, where, like, you have, you know, main plot drive, and there's, you know, you go find Siri, but she's clearly very capable, and yes, she's lost, but you can get around to that when you need to, but also, you're a witcher, and there's all these different contracts that are coming in, and the only way you're going to make coin and have, like, a reputation and be able to have more conversation options is to go and get lost in that stuff, and I, I love that pull of just sort of, it was something that I always compare it to one of the games I thought did that the worst, which is Max, Ma Mass Effect 3, um, where it was just the game opens with the destruction of Earth, and then it's just like, you know, you're immediately on a timer, um, and, you know, every time, like, a side mission comes along or something else that you can do, I'm like, well, why would I ever do this? Because the main thrust is so important. I clearly don't have time to do anything else. Um, whereas in The Witcher, I think you're encouraged enough to do everything. Um, and, like, in terms of that exploration stuff, like, I remember, because I'm literally, my save is, like, 600 hours, like, <clears throat> cough, cough. I remember when um, just spending time going question mark to question mark just to see if they were worthwhile and finding loads of little, like, bandit notes and, like, you know, like, there was, like, a rebellion between, like, a handful of different um, thieves that sort of, like, rebelled against their... Um, a leader or whatever and just realizing those little micro stories as well like i just i think it nails all that stuff on every single you know the micro to the macro levels um but also josh what's your Geralt wearing he's wearing uh, the um the the witcher cat outfit he was wearing oh sorry you said yes yeah the, he was wearing the witcher griffin outfit for a long time you know what i mean like not the, those... not the jester's outfit not the Jet. Well, yeah, no, not the Jet. I just want to look cool. But you can, you can. Josh has found a way. Find a way, better. You've just got to stick with it and wait until you're the high enough, enough level to wear it. Because even if you do find this stuff, you might not even hit the level requirements. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it might be wasted time. It might be better off just. I think I'm still like level 10. But the thing is, when I beat up this guy and then I won some coin, got a trophy. I was like, oh, a trophy the first time in the years. Then I found this man tied up on a road. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like, because I lo really love the world, is what you said. Like, yeah. I love Hen I love Henry and I love the world that Henry's in. And I love <laughs> the fact that the, this uh, post war sort of thing where everyone's like on edge and they're trying to recover from what's happened. And then these guys were like, well, no, we're going to kill him because he's an idiot. I was like, well, no, you're not going to kill him. Like, let him go. Having a little fighting these like four or five people, getting involved with that and really like getting used to the combat again mm -hmm. and then trying to kill the dragon goat thing like one after the other just it was this whole like sort of course of random events that mm -hmm. almost felt like a an episode of a tv show saying it's really weird how it just it meshed together and mm -hmm. i 
I just I can't wait for the, uh, it to hit four thirty today. Go back on it right now, like yeah, I'm I'm, I'm in. I've got that same like oh, just desire to play it. Like this weekend, I had to stop myself from just doing nothing but that. I had to stop myself and make myself be like, right, watch some films, do something else, have a break. Otherwise, you're going to blitz through it way too much. And part of that is because, like you said, Ben Roy, like the way missions and, and question marks and everything else sort of like blend into each other. It's yeah. so seamless. And so like it gives you the same kind of one more game kind of feel that <laughs> multiplayer games do. You know what I mean? It's almost like playing Call of Duty where it's like, oh, there's a question mark over there. I've got to see what happens. Oh, then I'm almost level 17 so I can finally get my cat armor. I'm going to have to go and do that. But for me, it's like the richness of the world and figuring out what um, the best way through quests, that's been the most rewarding thing this time around. Because the first time I played it, uh, you might hate me for this, but I did the thing where I looked up the optimal answers and the optimal what? route through quests online because <laughs> I was so stressed out about messing up that i had to know i just had to know i was one of those save scrubbers who who if if something didn't turn out right i would have to go back in the uh, alter it but this time around i'm not doing any of that i'm going in completely but blind so when i was doing the bloody baron quest for instance this time around even though i i knew all the outcomes it still felt tense because mm. i it was it was me making those decisions in the moment and i wasn't entirely sure what actions would lead to which consequences and mm. that felt so much more impactful when i did finally realize what i'd done and oh, that's, whether yeah, or not that's... i'd helped like it just it was so good and like all of it's never black and white really like it's your choices are never kind of laid out for you if you mm -hmm. think you're doing something you know that's right in the moment you might completely mess up but then you might get lucky and sort of find your way through it and end up you know not pissing everyone off which is always so satisfying i was doing the um the mission with Dijkstra in the uh, yes. in Novigrad, and I remember the first time around, I He's absolutely great. annoyed him so much to the point where he wouldn't talk or help me. <laughs> but this time around, I managed to, you know, I, I disappointed him a little bit, but I, I made friends with him, and now we have this like buddy relationship that I totally missed on the playthrough. Like when he was at the the ball that you go to with Tris, and we had a little mm -hmm. talk. And he's wearing his pig mask. And we have a little joke, and he said that he liked me, and I was like, oh, how did I miss this the first time around? Like this is such a completely <laughs> different playthrough here just because I made slightly different choices and you would never talk, you would never really get that. Cause although these games are often, you know, they're, they're marketed on the amount of different outcomes to quests and stuff mm -hmm. for, for, for a lot of time, like a lot of, in a lot of cases, I always think of it big picture. I mm -hmm. always think of, okay, so these are the monumental things that happen. If I do this, I don't think of those smaller flavor moments of, well, you know, this might not directly impact the story, but it's going to change the relationships with characters. It's going to change the way how I see them. Mm -hmm. And looking at those little nuances and differences this time around has been so so satisfying. That's the stuff that I I just think that's that that it's a weird sentence, but those ancillary things, all those side things, um, are more of the overall whole for The Witcher Three. Um, because I love the main story. I love where it goes. I love the Siri and the whole thing with the ugliest man on earth and how it leads to that big final battle against the uh, the wild hunt and everything. But I I love living as a Witcher. Like I just want to do that. I want to take on supernatural, be the supernatural bounty hunter, take on all these random contracts, and just be this sort of entity that goes from village to village, taking on whatever and spending some time playing a bit of Gwent every now and then and just sort of <laughs> doing whatever com comes along like uh for me that is that game it's the witcher simulator like yeah there is a main story but the um the side content the the more meaningless it feels on the side the chances are the more memorable it's actually going to be um because you've had to seek it out it's this sort of like dynamic interaction thing in cdpr like they just the amount of just hashtag content in that game that they've put in every little pixel of it it's just ridiculous I, um but yeah I'll I will say that um, I think I've become a bit broken recently, and becoming like more playing, <laughs> playing for check boxes. Where this game mm. is reteaching me patience, and like I'm trying to like go, no, give me what I want, and it's not giving me what I want. It's making me work for what I want. Yeah, and I kind of like liked... the wild mate. <sighs> boring. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's not boring. Okay, just don't kill me. It's all right. But... They're not going to come for you. But um, no, The Witcher. It's kind of teach me again to just ch chill out and just play at its pace and not try and force it and go through and like the five hours i put back into it over the weekend around like uh, uh social playing with my friends like it was, i was really enjoying it and i can't wait to just get this week sort of like just let it hang out but just ah, let's, let's go let's go henry <laughs> and just sink back it's try actually sink into this world and finally play the game i think how it's kind of meant to be sort of approached and not yeah. just yeah. shout shout at it for 
me breaking my sword and looking like a <laughs> jester. It's That's what I was going to yeah, yeah, sorry. I was, I was just saying, it's like, funny you should mention that, Ben Roy, because I think I have a, a similar sort of experience as you did there, because back in the day, back in 2015, I was the exact same. I was sort of trying to just tick the boxes, get through the missions, you know, follow the waypoint, not look at my surroundings, not live in the world. But I think after replaying Red Dead Redemption 2 at the start of this year, it's sort of, again, it, that, that game for me taught me to be patient and to indulge in the kind of minutia of everything that's going on and not just rush from point A to point B. So now that I've jumped from that to The Witcher within the space of um, a couple of months, I'm playing it again, how it probably is intended to be made and I'm getting so much more out of it. I already loved it. That's the best thing about it. I already loved it back in the day when I was arguably playing it a little bit wrong. But this time <laughs> around, it's 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 even better. Like I can't believe how much it, how well it holds up from a, like you said, like a holistic standpoint, everything informs, all the systems inform each other, the story comes together, the character comes together, the world is still absolutely gorgeous. Mm. And even in spite of some of the things that I do think are a little bit dated or not as polished as they could be, I think it more or less, it completely holds up. Mm -hmm. And Geralt, and, sorry, I was gonna say, and Geralt is, a, is a compelling character. It's all this mm. that you want from an open world game, but without the blank slateness of a Fallout, it's got someone that you care about and you're invested in his story and the people he knows. Like mm -hmm. that yeah. is that is literally what I want in a nutshell. I just bounced off it in a hard way, and now now I'm back. Geralt's so <laughs> so much funnier than I remembered him being. Like, yeah, I, I, I thought he was just like yeah. emotionless before, but he's an absolute banter hound this time around. He's <laughs> mugging everyone off. <laughs> he's 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 got the driest, most sarcastic wit. It's it's excellent. I love it. I just I don't I don't know what version of the game you guys played in 2015. <laughs> well, I don't know what you've been doing that you didn't have all this back then. I'm glad you've got it now. Um, but yeah, in terms of like the the whole thing just being this insanely detailed like tapestry where you can just pull at any thread of it and all this other stuff will come alongside it. Like everything plays off everything else. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm glad you've kind of you're swimming back in the oceans of The Witcher again. It sounds pretty good. Um, we might end for... up. I was say, get, get ready for cyberpunk so you know like i want to get mm. this game done before i then play the next thing because i'm definitely going to get that mm -hmm. and i feel like i owe it to myself and it's like to try it one more time and i think it's actually working this time yeah yeah totally and um, we might end up doing like a follow-up depending on how much more uh, time you guys put into it i i think i still have it installed it's like a 90 gig thing with all of its dlc um but we should maybe do a, a series of games that we're returning to uh whilst everything is in a bit of a kerfuff um but in terms of another question from the hashtag wcgp uh, tag on twitter um from mr blue sky who says um when is a game too short which is an interesting take. Um, my, <laughs> my mind went to uh, Control um, because I still haven't gone back to that game's DLC yet, but I just, I don't know, it, it's, it has to be when a game leaves me with a sense of disappointment. Um, I think it's all to do with pacing and, and payoff. Um, I think Streets of Rage 4, I've just finished that yesterday, um, is, it's only like 15 stages mm -hmm. long, but some of those stages are only like five or six minutes. And what is there is immaculate, but when I hit the credits, I still felt like it was a bit short. So I don't know, I think it's a pacing thing. I think if a game has story elements, then you need to, not need a three-act structure, but you need to go out on a high. Like it needs to feel like something that is a finale rather than just we ran out of dev time or we needed something, you know, something got in the way, so we're slamming the credits here. But um, what do you guys think? I was just going to say, jumping on the control thing, I think that's <laughs> after finishing Quantum Break uh, recently, I think that's just Sam Lake's start of writing, but he always mm. leaves something on a cliffhanger or a potential thing. Like Alan Wake ended with a massive cliffhanger. Mm. Uh, Quantum Break ends on like some sort of semi-cliffhanger, and so did Control. But um, I think the fact that we're getting these answers, these questions answered in the Control DLC, sure, people hate that stories continue, but he kind of writes his things as like, say episodes of tv or a film where it's going to continue mm -hmm. and it's funny you say the streets rage 4 because i'm going to be diving into that on the e-bank holiday uh i think games it's like that game. games like that that i can see it be short but i think it's weird like do they get a pass if they're intended to be played over and over again because i feel like streets yeah. rage 4 is one where it wants you to then play on a harder difficulty afterwards and say like a uh, Resident Evil 3 where you then finish it and then you go back and then you play it again on, a, on another high difficulty to experience it and things have changed throughout. Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes the length is a weird one but at the same time I think some games can be better for not being 100 600 hour epics yeah I, it's it's obviously like case by case just to throw in on the re3 thing or, or even i think for streets of rage 4 i think price is a massive thing and it depends yeah. on what you paid for it at the time game um, pass 
Yeah, Game Pass solves a lot of it. Um, it's just it's a, I don't know. It, there's there's just a lot of assumptions baked into like, oh well, I paid this much, or it's it is the story heavy thing, or I paid this much for a story. Um, and in yeah, it's just, there's a lot of like nuance to it. Josh, what were you gonna say? Sorry. Uh, yeah, actually, I was gonna pretty much just repeat everything you said. I do think it's like <laughs> case by case, and I do think it comes down to um pacing and quality because I mm-hmm. think if something's like a complete 10 out of 10, it's only like three or four hours. I, to me, that justifies full price because it's mm-hmm. it's a really special experience. It's, it feels complete and good. It, for me, a short game is only disappointing if it feels rushed, if it feels unfinished, if it feels like corners are being cut. Some of my favorite games of all time are like two hours long, an hour mm-hmm. and a half long, like walking simulators that have a beginning, middle and end and they tell a self-contained story. But it, it always feels like that's how long they were intended to be. Mm-hmm. My, my my issue only comes when something feels like it's being cut short. If, yeah. if it feels like the developers had bigger ambitions and it's not being paced correctly to have this nice payoff at the end, it doesn't feel complete. That's the only time where I feel like, oh, short change. And then I feel about, then I start thinking about, you know, well, was this worth the price? Was this worth mm-hmm. uh, this much money? Was it worth my time? Do I feel satisfied and stuff like that? So I think ultimately, you know, I don't know. I was going to say a short game is always better than a bloated one. I don't know never whether that's no. true. Yeah, I don't know if it, I don't think it's as cut and dry as that. I think it's, it is just case by case. It's how much of the developer's intent or the creative's co- intent comes through. Um, because it's a great comparison that like Benroy mentioned about the other Remedy games. Because I I like those cliffhangers in terms of they made like especially Alan Wake's one. Um, that if, if it intentionally creates conversations, that's that's cool. Um, in Remedy's in um Control's case, I just felt like it it just ended. It was just here's some credits were done, and obviously yeah. we've got the DLC plan. Um, but yeah, I just it's weird because how the hell do you analyze intent? But um. I, yeah, when a game is too short, I think I just have to hang it on on disappointment or like a general feeling of negativity whenever the credits roll. If it feels like there should have been more for whatever reason, then that's then that's too short. Yeah, I feel like uh, as well though with um, developers and stuff, I think there's a real fear, especially in AAA games now, of making a game that's perceived to be too short. Because for mm. the longest time, especially at the, at the very end of the Xbox 360 era, we were getting these these super short games, these sh- super short campaigns for full mm. price, and it sort of did feel like developers were trying to give us less and there was a major backlash against that and that led to all the open world boom and people being kind of wary of short games and i totally get that from like a financial perspective you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i used to have to you know trade in all my games to buy a new game and would be yeah. really disappointed if i'd finished it in a in a weekend or something but I, I just think like everything you need balance you need uh that intent to come through you need developers to not be worried but also you need players to understand that sometimes a short experience isn't isn't inherently worse than a, than a longer one. You know that that yeah, experience yeah. can still be worth sixty pounds, fifty pounds, or whatever. If it's if it's satisfying, and complete, and good, and special, and not bloated. Yeah. If we, um, um, oh, sorry, should you say? And if we take uh, Alien Isolation, for example, too long in the back half. Like mm-hmm. you could have cut. Was it like five hours off the end of that? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe three hours extra in the end that you'd be fine. But towards the end, that just kept going and going. I said, like, I really enjoy this game, but when is it gonna let me? go home and not be eaten by a xenomorph what's going on here mm-hmm. i remember thinking um like my uh, an example that kind of rolls everything together for me was inside and um, like having waited for that for i think it was like six years uh maybe yeah maybe seven years between uh, limbo and then inside finishing inside in one sitting like downloading it that morning finishing it in the afternoon and thinking like man that was really short and then having that like uh, feeling, but then going like, okay, but what would I have done? And the answer was nothing else. That game is pristine and absolutely perfect. Um, and then absolutely loving it for that. It was just, yeah, I, I don't know. There's a lot of, there's so many variables. Like it's just prices will change. You know, things will feel more worthwhile over time. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating thing. We could um, we could always revisit it and do a more uh, blown out version for a full pod. Um, but thanks very much to Mr. Blue Sky uh, for that. You can also head over to the uh, Twitter tag, hashtag WCGP, and leave your own questions and we'll get to them in the future. For now, this has been the World Culture Gaming Podcast. I've been your host, Scott Taylor, joined by Ben Roy Turner. Goodbye. And Josh Brown. Who oh. seems to have died. He's, he's frozen. Old, he's gone. I'm going to assume that Josh Brown would oh. say goodbye. Now there's multiple Josh Browns. To <laughs> there's join another Josh the- Brown. <laughs> Hello? Am I here? What's well, going yeah, on? You are, but your clone's just sitting with a frozen face. We're going to leave that in the edit because it's just too weird to not do. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. Sorry, not to take over this pod like I've just burst in. Why does my computer keep doing this? It did it in the Assassin's Creed video the other day where I couldn't get in and I was ruining, ruining a video there and it's just crapped out just as you're about to sign off here. I'll tell I you what, technology. if you...
if you want, um, yeah, if you want like a fun little Easter egg, uh, head over to me and Kirsten's reaction to the Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer and just watch for a muted Josh dropping in about six minutes in, just drop it in, sitting there, not knowing he's on camp, and then uh, leaving, coming back and leaving again. It's a, it's a good time. Josh, my friend, all I need from you is a lovely goodbye. Oh, goodbye, everyone. Thank you for putting <laughs> up with me. <laughs> Catch you all next time. Bye. Bye.